record. All right. All right. Well, welcome to our summer camp 2024 conference call. Um, thanks for being here. Um, hopefully we can get through any questions that you have. So um, I had put a, some, just some information together back in November and shared that. And some of this you'll see is, is a repeat. Um, and But we've added a few different things. So trying to help improve as we go along. So um, this is Alyssa. I don't know if any of you had a chance to meet with her yet. Um, some of you have. I know we've worked through um, Ash and Amelie Sugar Hollow and um, Trefo have been working through their registration. So we've had a few times, but um, Alyssa comes from uh, Colonial Coast. She has um, background in summer camp there. Um, and so we're really glad. So I'm just working to help on board her and everything, get her trained in the system. She's doing really great. Um, and she catches on really quick, which is awesome. Um, and um, so, but it helps me if you send stuff to info at, because then I can see the communications or she can chatter me if she needs help. So um, that really helps. Um, and it helps us not to bog down our other inbox when we're trying to work through all that. So thank you very much. But um, um, I really hope that y'all will enjoy working with Alyssa. She is very summer camp oriented and really excited about the position and is very sorry she couldn't be here this evening. Um, she had planned to, but um, so quick updates. The admin fees are going to be capped at 15. So they went to 15 um, for any camper registration over $50. Obviously, any camper registrations under $50, there's not an admin fee. Um, but it's capped at 15. So I do not think for the any of the foreseeable future. Um, I'd like to never say never, but any of the foreseeable future, it's 15. So you can just count on 15 until we, you know, say otherwise. So um, if you've not, I know a good portion of you have actually have submitted your camp budgets, but um, it's helpful to have these before we set up the registrations in Camp Brain. So if you haven't, please get those in. Um, a lot of times Brenda does need them if we, you know, if we're doing some uh, refunds of sorts, we need to kind of sometimes know what the breakdown is per camper um, if we have to make an adjustment depending on, you know, um, whatever happens that it, there, a refund would be required. Um, end of the year paperwork is due. Um, I want you to know right now, Alyssa is going through the camp manual and all the forms. And we're going through the forms that are like in camp brain versus all those things that we used to ask for. So we can try to clean those up. Obviously, we're not going to have it all done before um, this camp season. But the hope is by our next and I really do hope that we're, the plan is to have a camp conference after this summer camp season. So you would get an updated manual and an up, updated forms and things like that. So we're really trying to reduce the number of paper forms that y'all have to turn into us. So hopefully that's a good thing. So, because a lot of it lives in Camp Brain now. So, and that's where it should live. Um, and, and just make, you know, y'all's lives easier. All of our lives easier, less paperwork. Any questions about that? Okay. No, I think that's great. I think if, um, because we're sort of, I mean, our camp's gonna transition from leadership anyway, but because we're sort of transitioning from the old system to Camp Brain and the website has transitioned, some forms are easier to find than others. If if there's end of your paperwork that you all are missing, can you let us as camp know? Like, I know this is saying like it's past due, like yeah. we think we're all in, right? <laughs> so like if we're not, but I'm sure you're yeah. answer the same way. We just it's, let us know. Yes, yes, and so yeah, we'll re we'll reach out to those camps. Like we know, so when that's just like an overarching. If you haven't submitted, please do it. If you submitted it, don't sweat it, right? So if you don't hear from us, you know, if you don't, if you haven't, we haven't reached out to you by now. You should be good. And we know, like I said, the paperwork. Is some of it's just outdated, you know, it just needs to be redone. And that's what we're trying to, trying to fix two of those things. But yes, we will reach out to you if we have any concerns. Is that helping? Right. That's Because that's my thing. Like I gave Sam my list, but I'm not even sure my list is accurate anymore. Exactly. Because there's just different lists in different places. So yeah, if you'll just let us know if we're missing yeah. it. Again. So we're we're trying to clean it up on the website and, and, and what's in the manual versus, you know, all those forms. So yes, absolutely. Um, I know you, Amelie, did a really good job of putting, you know, like your CIT stuff, all this stuff is like in one place in Camp Brain, which is, which is great. So I think that's just going to help, um, help moving forward. But yes, absolutely. So as part of 
Alyssa's learning. She's looking at all the forms and we're looking at those together and saying, yep, they don't need this anymore. Oh, yep, they need this, but it needs to be updated. Um, so hopefully that helps. Okay. Um, so back in November, October, November, we ended the 2023 camp brain seasons. They've been officially closed down um, and we've cloned the new registrations. You know, so your last year's registrations have been cloned for 2024. Um, and Angie has a question. Go ahead, Angie. Of course, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I need to figure out how to get full admin okay. um, authority over my camp. It's actually turned out the last two years I haven't had admin authority to, to hire my staff fully. Okay. So, yeah. So, if you we were just, I had all the, the health forms and stuff behind the scenes, but as far as actual in Camp Brain, none of it was ever there because I, the little hire button everybody kept telling me was there, wasn't okay. ever on my screen. Okay. So, so. Angie, all right. I'm going to make a list because I know Angie and Ash both need some additional. As y'all learned the system, we've been um, allowing, you know, allowing y'all to have a little more access. So obviously, yes, you should have had access to hire your staff. Um, so Ash, I know, and Angie need. So if you'll hang on at the end so I can work through that to, you know, kind of make you log in and things like that, we'll we'll get that um, taken care of. Oh, so I should spend the next while looking for my password. Okay, thanks for the update. Yeah, you should probably, yeah, so yeah. you actually, and I may have to give you a temporary, so if it's been a while since you logged in, I can't do a password reset. I actually have to send you a temporary password, and then you um get logged back in, just so you know. Like, the, it, after, like, I don't know how long it is, but it's a long time, but if you haven't I logged in. I found it. Okay, I'm good. good. I found it. Awesome. Okay, so health forms, I'll talk about health forms. Um, health forms are the way they are set up in Camp Brain are not a household form, okay? But we do have them set for pre-filled. So what all this means is that if they attended, I'll use um, Friendly Hollow and Dark Hollow. So if they attended, um, you know, Friendly Hollow, there's a Friendly Hollow, like even though the health forms are consistent, we make them consistent, they still have to fill out a form for Friendly Hollow and Dark Hollow. It's not the same form. But if they registered last year for Friendly Hollow and registered and attended for Dark Hollow, those health forms are preloaded. Yes, Angie, I knew you'd have a question. Go ahead. Related, but unrelated. Um, I had a situation where I had a parent that um, has children with different households. So okay. she has one daughter with one father and then another with a different one. And the current system didn't allow, and I, I proposed, I told Chris this. Um, so we had, it was a tag along that wasn't you know, fully registered in the system. And I had paper, paper copies of stuff and posts of it, but she wasn't actually able to win. And I mean, like she could create a separate account with a separate email and that was an option out there, but there's no way in Camp Brain currently to handle situations where children from the same families that share a parent that don't share both parents. Okay. I'll reach out to them. That might be something we want to get support from Camp Brain about. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if and sharing one parent, right? It's one parent with different, right, right. different fathers. It's, okay, yeah. So, right. yeah. So that, that's something I will look into to see what they suggest. So and it yeah. was important that the fathers were there because they were the ones helping to transport the girls back and forth. Right. So we obviously needed their contact information because they were the ones picking the girls up. Right. Right. So, yeah, let me talk to the me, older girl. Up. Yeah, let me, talk, okay. let me talk to Camp Brain. I'll, you know, listen, I'll talk to Camp Brain and see what they suggest in, in regards to that. And I will, if you will send an email to info at and let me know the names of those um, people, um, just send it to info at and I'll work with Alyssa through that. Um, that will help us because we'll need that example to show them. So, okay, I'll send in the example. Awesome. All right, thanks. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Um, so any questions about that and the health form and the pre-filled? So I think what happened last year is the pre-filled did not get turned on. So when we clone from 2022 to 2023, there's little buttons that we have to click. And I just think when that happened, it didn't get turned on. Um, and so the pre-fills weren't there. So they are there. We have confirmed. Okay. 
Um, so that should improve a little bit this this year. So that should make it a little bit better. Um, especially if they're just renewing for the same camp every year. So, um, and once they get into all these other camps, you know, that would help. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on unless y'all have questions. All right, um, so re registration set up this link. Again, I'm gonna post this back out. I'll post it in there. Um, the first thing is we wanna make sure that you're putting your um, dates for your summer camp on the Rally Hood calendar because Jennifer pulls those and pulls those over to our website just so we can have like a save the date kind of thing already out there. Um, and then if you're ready for us to walk through your registration and do your setup, you wanna set up a time with us um, again, the first rounds were December. We have new slots. So if you click this different date, so I'll, I'll update the slides. Um, we really are trying to aim to get registrations built by February 1st. Um, Alyssa is dedicated to building those. So if, if you've not set up a time, please try to do that in the month of January. There's a few dates available um, that you can see when you click on that link. Um, and then once the registration and that main registration page gets updated, then Alyssa is sending all that information to Marcom to make sure, so we're consistent. So we don't wanna post publicity and things like that until we get that main page built because we just had too many discrepancies in the past. And so that's where Marcom is gonna pull the information. So it's all the same. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Yep, go ahead. Do we know, um, like I know prior that you all have wanted us to launch our dates at the same time. Um, is there a launch date planned? Um, so ideally we, so ideally moving forward, we really would like to have registrations built before like the Christmas break, right? So we could technically launch them in January or, and the reason why we aim for January, February 1st is our deadline. If we want to advertise in the camp expo. So ideally by February 1st, because if we're going to, I know Roanoke has an, an, a camp EXO and so does um, in the Charlottesville area. And we advertise all the camps because people come from all over, like literally all over the state to those camp expos. Um, and so we want to be able to publicize them there um, because people are looking for camps, right? Um, so ideally February 1st, because it's usually the second week of February. Emily, you can remind me. I know in Charlottesville, the one's always like the second week of February. So is that yeah, answer? that's right. Ash, does that help? So ideally, um, I see what you're saying. Um, I was more referring for this year of when it's going to get the switch will get flipped, just okay. so I can let parents know because so, I'm currently running tier registrate or tier RSVPs. If your camp is ready to go and you want to start before February, we will let you open up. That is up to so I will we will let you and Brenda. I mean, you don't have I I don't we don't have any qualms about you opening if you're ready. Does that, does that like if you want to start next week, we'll open it up and start advertising. Like that's whatever you would like. So just we just need to know. Um, okay. you know, I know good. yeah. So we we ideally um we'd like to get you know camps, but we know that doesn't work for every camp. But uh, we need the setup to be done. Let me just say that we need the setup to be done by February first, so we can advertise and promote and you know we push out social media. We we actually will do um um specific groups and I mean there's a lot of things that Jennifer and Marcom department will push out anywhere and everywhere they possibly can for our summer camp. So um you know by that helps Marcom. You know, I think it's more of a Marcom thing than it is a this side of things. Is that hopefully that helps. I don't know, Brenda, if you have any um, you know, I don't I don't I don't think there's any qualms about starting it early. So okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the key thing is we just want to make sure we have all the stuff updated <laughs> before we start pushing it out. Um, okay. So there have been some reports that have been built. So when you see a report that has like an A in front of it, that the, that's usually a customized report that, <laughs> hey, um, that we have, um, asked Camp Brain to build. Um, we, thanks to Amelie's help, we have actually filled out figured out the t-shirt form a little bit better. So there's not suggestive text. There's actually multiple choice for your t-shirt sizes. So Alyssa will be working through that. Um, but there are a couple of forms and 
I'm like, I don't know. Did you send me or can do you have a copy of the or do you can you like share your screen of the report that you're wanting to be built out? And Camp Brain, do you have that with you? I don't think yes. Give me two seconds and I will okay. pull that. Yeah. So we're looking to like what reports do you need? What do your reports need to look like? The 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 way Camp Brain works is that, you know, everything lives and breathes in Camp Brain. And you should be able to filter that information the way you need it. You know, there are certain things that have to be set up a certain way in order for you to see that information. Um, but we just want to know what do you want the form to look like? So one of the things that I asked them to do is... I got it, Jenny. You got it? Okay. One of the things... I'm going to let Amelie share her. I'm going to let her share her screen so you can see. Um, so we're, she's going to send this to me. And I am going to ask Camp Brain to see if they can make something like this for us. Is this something that everybody could use? Would you like a similar report? Okay, great. Um, awesome. Yeah, love that. So yeah, so we're going to send this to Camp Brain to see if it's something they can build out. Um, you know, like... Um, Sugar Hollow has bus buses or, you know, which is a little bit different, but you might need something else in that slot. So if there's something else you'd like to see in there, that would be great. Um, one of the things that we did ask, um, and Amelie, uh, thank you. If you will email this to me, Amelie, I don't know if you had a chance to do it, please email it to me so I can send it because I want to have an example. Um, yep, um, it's on my list tonight. So it all it's headed your way. Totally fine, totally fine. Okay, I'm going to take back over the screen. Um, and so one of the things that we did ask um, that they do is at least create a report that had that included the inhalers, not just the EpiPens, right? So they added it's ACM 300 campers with EpiPens and inhalers. That's the new report. Um, and so if you want to pull that and have it for your med team, your med person, it's there for you to pull um, and it will just it only pulls that information. The other thing is that if you use the ACM 400 medical form and the ASM 400 medical form, um, anything that they've said no to, so if you're wanting to print out all the health forms, we recommend that you use this one, these two forms, because anything that they've said no to as far as like health history wise it condenses the report. So you don't see all the no answers. You only see the yes answers. So it makes that form, that help form shorter. Does that help? Hopefully that's help. Okay. So just know that. So you want to keep track of these lists of forms or whatever that, you know, again, we've just had them create different ones. Um, and, you know, if you're looking for something different, you just need to let us know. Um. That was the other thing. So come up a couple of times about user management. If you've had someone let leave, you know, and it's no longer working with your camp administrative team, please let us know so we can remove their access. And then if obviously, if there's somebody that you need to have access, you need to send that list into us so we can add it. Because it does take us a little bit to make sure we check all the boxes. And sometimes it takes a little bit to make sure we check the right boxes. There's a lot of boxes to check. So... Um, but yeah, so if you, and if you'll stay on at the end, um, Ash and Angie, I'll make sure to give you access. Okay. Any questions about reports or forms or anything like that? We have uh, some other slides a little bit that kind of goes into detail on some of these, but, um, you know, we do, they will build us some custom reports and we want to make it what you need. So, um, so Brenda, do you want to share? Um, about the activity insurance? She's muted. So, excuse me, we're having a major screen right now, so. Yeah. I black out, and I don't mean like I black out and I pass out and slide under my desk. Um, um, you just know that we've been hit by a tornado. <laughs> so, GSUSA has Get, we're talking about the how they've given it to us for free that majority which was great because to tell you the truth i was thinking of moving the council in that direction before gsusa decided on it so um that was in my little pocket i was so glad that they decided to do it so 
most of the activity insurance that is purchased or previously to October 1st, 2023 is now covered for free. Um, so there's no longer that fee that everybody has to do. You don't have to fill out any forms. It is automatically covered. Um, so that is wonderful. You know, obviously it has to be a Girl Scout event. You still have to follow the rules um, to be covered. You can't have some oh, crazy party or whatever. Um, so the only things that you actually would be paying for and, and filling out the form for is if you want to be covered for sickness, um, or if you're doing international travel. Other than that, it doesn't matter how long you're staying overnight or anything like that. There's no limits whatsoever. So that has really, we've talked about this a little, um, you know, it, it wasn't really a big expense, but I know that it was a real hassle for everyone to go through all the paperwork and fill that out. So that's one last thing. Doesn't mean you 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 still have to get approval for your activity. Um, so that still means you have to do that, but you no longer have to deal with this insurance situation. So that's good. One less piece of paper, you know? Well, and, and if you were budgeting for that, that's something that maybe can go somewhere else. So hopefully that'll help. I mean, you still have to register, you know, so you still, like... So again, tagalongs, you're not having to, a lot of times it was a purchase for tagalongs or maybe some other kind of program aspect. Um, but, um, and and because camp was more than three days. So um, yes, who has a question? Um, I do. Yeah, go ahead. So, so just to confirm my understanding, because it's, we had a very long day with Mike with CT scanning yesterday. So my brain's a bit fuzzy. Um, <laughs> If I'm understanding this correctly, residence camps are now able to be covered under basic plan one, and I do not need to file any more assurance. Okay, you made my day. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. That is the answer to, that is, yes, the answer is yes. That is correct. So yes, you are correct. So yeah, absolutely. All right. Glad I could answer that question. Let's keep moving. Um, yes. Yes. Um last year we we have an adventure group that leaves camp yes at least five times mm -hmm. um during our two-week period yep. uh, for day trips so we need to make sure that you have that information well before camp because even though we've been doing this for 30 years and use the same vendors for the most part Last year, it was like, oh, what do you mean you leave camp? And and <laughs> wish we were like, what do you mean? What do we mean? <laughs> right. It was almost comical because it had never been an issue. But we also had new uh, employees that right. weren't aware of this. The vendor they problem. weren't aware that we're a two-week camp either. So yeah. all, all of those kind of... Um, all of those issues kind of came into into view, and we want to make sure that we we've commun communicated what we need to communicate, so right. we're all on the same page and we're all happy. Yes, yes. So vendor approval. So that's a good. So and I don't think there's a slide for this. So I'll just. I'm glad that you brought it up. If you are using someone for, so the best way, place to start to know if you need a vendor approval is go to safety activity checkpoints. It's based on your activity. So if you're kayaking and you do not have volunteers that have a kayaking certification, you need to work with a vendor, an outfitter to provide that activity, right? Well, that vendor, that outfitter has to be an approved vendor by us. And so you will want to make sure that they're on our approved vendor list. I know River has been working on that to try to get them, you know, people updated. Um, however, the vendors tend to drag their feet and they don't want to do it until the event is happening, right? And so they want to wait till the last minute. And the main key point that we need from those vendors is a certificate of insurance stating they have a general liability of at least $1 million and we have to be named additional insured, okay, on their certificate of insurance. We will then turn around and name them additional insured on ours. And that has been 
like I think that's where the hiccup was where in a communication where the communication breakdown Judy I think um like obviously you know it's like if it's not tit for tat so to speak like they don't want to do it right so it's like why are we naming you additional shirt and you're not doing that for us well we will they just didn't know that we would. So there's some forms that have to be completed to make that happen. But you want to make sure that your vendors, your outfitters, based on safety activity checkpoints, you know, which which activities require that. If you look at the safety activity checkpoints, they've the only ones that have not been posted yet are the kayaking because we're updating the certification. We're working with ACA, but those will be posted soon. Um, but anyway, um, is just that so you know. for the city and county as well? Yeah. So, yeah. So, in, you know, go government is awfully offended when you ask them for things. Yes. And, and I, mean, I mean that in kind of a comical way because yeah. I don't know why they would be. But. but but I will say this. If they are. So. So that's a good that's a good point. So if they're run by Parks and Rec, we know they cannot indemnify us. OK, so we would approve them, but they still need to be on the approved list. We still need to go through a process that says, yes, this is Parks and Recs. They're approved. Does that make sense? Like we may not we know we can't get a certificate of insurance and that liability then is going to be on us. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. But it, it just means that we need to be very careful that we keep everybody in the loop. Yes, that's, that's major. Yeah. And I don't know if this makes anyone else feel any better, but like we ran into the exact problem you're describing two years ago. We were like, we definitely do not do any of this with our vendors. We've just been working with them for years and it's all, right. you know, shake a hand, spit in the corner. Right. right. And we just go with it. And like, I basically was like, hey, by the way, apparently we're supposed to be doing insurance paperwork. Let me connect you with my supervisor boss. Yeah. And like, I literally just did an email, like, yeah. introduction to. Yeah like the programming team and council, it was just like, they're going to work out the details with you and didn't have anything to do with it after that. That's exactly. Um, was just CC'd on the emails, but it meant that like, I didn't mess up any of the language and council got exactly what they needed out of it. So Jody, I don't know if that's still an okay way to do it, but like that meant I wasn't really taking on a ton of burden with this, but council got the paperwork they needed. And for things like Parks and Rec, where there's like some exceptions and weirdness, like council was able to navigate that and do what they needed to get done. Absolutely. That's, that's absolutely correct. So yes, you can just do the introductions to the program staff. Um, and River has been kind of taking the lead on that, but do send it, you can send it to info at, like they just need to know, say this is for Dark Hollow Day Camp, or this is for Sugar Hollow Day Camp. These are the vendors we need approved. We will be using them for these dates. And that's what they need. They need to know what you're doing, right? They need to know the activity. So because it is activity, the key thing is remember, Vendor approval is activity, safety activity checkpoints. It's all activity specific. And so different activities require different things. And so um, the higher the risk, then yes, there's more a little bit involved there. So hopefully that helps. And I see Angie, you have a question. Sounds um, good. Great. Two questions. Yes. Um, first of all, should the location of my summer camp be listed as a vendor? No, unless, well, I will say that the exception to that is depending if they, that site, so say that site, do they have zip lining? Do they, so for just accommodations and camping, so again, remember specific. So you're camping at the site, right? So if it's just for camping, okay. lodging and food, no, right? If it is for zip lining and kayaking and things that are high risk, that are high adventure, then yes, they would be named a vendor for those things. Does that help? Yes, that was my question. Um, it, so I read a form and I think I read it wrong and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should be on that. The place should be on the list. And yeah. since I'm having a location issue right now, I'm like, am I going to have to get this other place approved? You know, I know we're just doing basic. You um, all one overnight. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh no, that's it's fine. Um, but so I'm just making sure that my other one is, we have the last year invited parents for a campfire for like an hour or two. Um, do we need? They're not registered. They're just coming as parents. Um, we don't even necessarily have the girls mixing with the girls over here. The parents are over there, kind of deal. Are we supposed to have insurance for them because they're not registered and they're not? Not about the insurance. 
the key thing that we're working through is this policy that is on the screen right now. So um, this was supposed to go to the board. I have not gotten an update um, because that's kind of a family. So typically, and that, and we might be able to label as this, I don't know. So um, typically we have not required a registration and background check. If the parents, you know, like Aunt Joe and Aunt Sally and mom and dad are coming for a ceremony, right? So it's a ceremony celebration, right? right? But if it is like, a program, a trip, an overnight troop meetings, cookie booths, those require adults to be registered and background checked. It requires more oversight. And those things are just, we've just had too many issues and I can give you. Oh, no, no. I Yeah. So I get but, that. But, I'm totally on board there. Yeah. I was just you wondering there. about the insurance and no, you do not need additional Bye. insurance for that. It covers okay, unregistered adults and children uh, yes yeah, so so. okay that was that was kind of a two-part question um yeah. yeah it's just a ceremony the kids that are leaving leave with mom and dad everybody else says bye we're gonna go have fun see you later see you in the morning mom dad so yeah. okay cool thank yeah. you yeah so i would i would i would say that's some sort of ceremony you know if that's some sort of ce ceremony. celebration at the end of camp i would i would personally categorize that as you know some sort of ceremony things what what I've asked for clarification from Nikki and the board is family events, right? So when it's a family program, it's it's more geared to a family program, you know, where you're inviting the whole family to participate in a program or something. So that's where clarification is needed. Um, and so I'm still working on that, but for now, I think I think you've covered it just fine. Okay, thank you. Right? If there's any changes with the family oriented type events activities, we'll let you know. Okay. Once I get an update. All right. I, I try to make it as clear, but sometimes it's about as clear as mud. So, all right. So property updates, some property updates are still undergone, you know, been underway. Um, I think y'all might be familiar. So I'm not going to read all of this. Um, I, there's still some water stuff going on at Ishimani. Um, and um, I don't know if all that's been cleared up yet. They will post it. If y'all are not in the property um, update rally, please join because that will give you the latest up-to-date information. Um, and then um, Troop House is literally almost done. I think they're also scheduling gutters and things for Troop House at Sacagawea. And then Sugar Hollow, um, a lot of things have been underway. I believe now there are literally no rodents to be seen, which is great. Knock on wood, that stays away. But as for our understanding, yes. Um, the dumpster has been removed. If you didn't know that, please pack out your trash. Um, there's still the tree planting project. It continues. It's going to go into scheduling in 2024. Go ahead, Amelie. What's your question? So for clarification, the trash service, is the intent for trash service to come back for day camp? Oh. No, not even for day camp, Brenda. So we will not be able to pack out trash to that level. Yeah. And we've never had to before. So will we be going back to the old trash I'll system? I'll talk to Melissa but tomorrow. Yeah. And then I can email you and let you know. Because, right. you know, they haven't really thought that far ahead. Really, our goal yeah, was to get through the spring and get through the right, and, and we don't want the rats to come back. And the old system was what brought in the right. rats, and so and I prefer not to go back to the old system. Dumpster. And so that was leading to the rats having food 365 days a year. Right. So, um, so I think we're going to have to definitely well, line up. I, some my understanding sort of is the original intent of the dumpster was only to have it for like a month or two in the summer, anyway. But for whatever right. reason, it was it stayed the whole time, right? Yeah. Um, so okay. yeah, that was the Tim thing, I believe. Um, yes, yeah. When we tomorrow. originally talked to Tim, he was like, "No, the dumpster's only going to be there during the summer," and then it it stayed. Um, yeah. But yeah, we so. just so when you're having that conversation, if you'll advocate for us, we yep. we can't pack out oh, trash yeah. for two hundred people, right? Yeah, that's yeah. it doesn't so make sense. Happen. No. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, now that everything's been alleviated, we can move yeah. forward. I mean, our intention wasn't originally to get rid of the trash in the first place, but right. because the rats, you know, decided to have a festival and move in, and it was New yeah. York City for the rat population. 
So, it, it really you know. was in the in the old. I don't. I actually don't even know what trash service looks like at the other properties to know like how is it that they do it that they don't That's have true. rats. But our old system definitely I was know. used and abused and encouraged. Well, we don't have. They, it was picked up more often. Right. Sugar Hollow was never picked up on a regular basis. So yeah, you the have trash service out there is just not there. a great company. It's just right. not picked up very consistently. Yeah. So the place that we use now, um, Ishmani and everybody, they, we all we have new trash service for both Ishmani and for um, uh, well, I think Saxman. It's the same for a while, but it's on a regular rotating base. It's scheduled pickups twice a week. Um, but Sugar Hollow was not that way. And so that led for the trash to be sitting there. Um, yeah. And we really don't have the necessity of having it taken every single uh, week. It doesn't make sense to do something like that, given the use of that property. Right. Um, the other thing about both Ishimani and um, Stack is that no one could really get in to put trash in the trash can. You know, but, you know, you got to walk up the driveway of a gated property. Right, to, yeah. It's one of the things to figure out. Like, even, like, the first day we put the dumpster out there, like, there was a couch in it within 24 hours, and we were like, right. listen. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, at, you know, having that accessibility right there, there's not a lot of places that we can put a dumpster at Sugar Hall. Right, anyway, but a dump truck can get, get to it, but the neighbors yeah. can't. Yes. yes. Right. So, <laughs> we'll have to I'll talk to... To Melissa and I'll talk to Bobby and find out what's a feasible situation so we're not inviting our little friends back. Perfect. Yeah. And we're happy to circle back and sort of brainstorm things because I know our camp is going to be like the primary need for that like kind of larger option. So um, right. let us know and the director team's happy to jump in on that conversation no if we need to. Brenda, All one right. of the things we might be able to do, even though if can't, if it's not active or whatever, maybe just put up a camera, like there's a camera on it. You know, like, I don't know if it even has to be an active camera, but just like a camera that, you know, they think that it's active. Um, and I right. posted some um, uh, dumpster rental vendors that we might be able to look into as well in the chat. So okay. thank you. So that might be something, you know, All I don't right. know. Great. Can... I'm going to copy and paste those into my thank meeting you. with Melissa right now. Yeah. So thank you. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. Well, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, hopefully we can solve it. So, Jude, yeah, go ahead, Jude. Go ahead, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, so, what does that mean for Dark Hollow? Uh, we've all, we've had a dumpster there at Ishimani just specifically for Dark Hollow. We tend to uh, to generate trash. We do crafts, and and right. everybody cooks out both weeks. Uh, for, for Ishwani has trash removal done on a bi-weekly bit, I mean a twice a week. And right. there's two containers, massive containers, because we've double booked, double contracted ourselves. So right. you are gonna have more than enough room mm -hmm. for your trash and yeah. you don't have to worry about it. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh Ishwani. good. I yeah. feel free to bring your couch. <laughs> I, I didn't want to wait and then come to you go what, what, what do I do so okay all right that's well, fantastic well, well yeah, not fantastic you're double booked but you know no, yeah. yeah no but but um Brenda can share that but if there's any concern if you feel like there's any concerns but it's kind of like what Ash said like if you see that's getting full you know thankfully you know the staff are going to be right there so you can say hey we need a, a, a scheduled additional pickup you know we're going to have more right time. and we have the ability to be able to do that with these guys so just let the office staff know or tell them to reach out to me right um yeah. so sandy and i are the keepers of the trash i don't know where that award came from um so and i'm not feeling it's a good thing so but we could get somebody there within 24 hours I'm gonna, um as long as we know about it so they're gonna get a certificate trash keepers yeah, goody goody gonna make fun oh so funny okay um so gutter insulation at multi-purpose and rocket top has been scheduled and i do believe um um i didn't add it here but i think they're also being scheduled for troop house and some of the other um at uh stack or wherever they're needed so i even everywhere. think everywhere there, there were no gutters anywhere on our properties i there noticed we, that in march of last the previous year yeah. and i was like what the heck 
it's such a simple thing, you know? So, and it, we, because we didn't have gutters installed on all the properties, it caused so much damage. Right. Um, so yeah, now everything is, everybody gets a gutter. You get a gutter, they get a gutter. I mean, gutters yep. are everywhere now. So okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. All right. So we had some rally hidden hands ons. I don't know if you knew this. This is some of the posts. Um, they have done, redone their app. Um, and it's working really well. So um, we glad the communications and stuff. I'm not going to read all this, but if you want to download the app, we recommend you download the app. It's working really great. You can see who has looked at your post. Um, it's a great way to communicate. Um, something you might want, some camps are using. So Rallyhood is being looked at by GSUSA. And so it may be eventually a built-in feature. Um, and so they're looking at enterprising it, just so you know. So some councils use rally hood to they set up certain like rallies for to share the gallery and photos um because you can turn off and on permissions and things like that so if you want to rally for your camp so you can share photos with parents or something like that and manage that you can do that just let us know if that's something you're interested in so um there's a whole tutorial um this is a great tutorial so if you're not familiar with um rally hood there's these little snippet uh video youtube playlists of different tutorials of how to do things so um that is also there and again we'll post that back in our rally so you can look through this later so um but if you have any questions just let me know um so again there's there they're supposed the rally hood is actually supposed to be adding um that link to every rally just so you know um, annual meetings coming up. So if you are a delegate or an alternate um, and are planning to participate or just come and be a part of the annual meeting, registration is closed. Actually, registration is closing soon. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Um, um, it closes um, January 16th. So if you haven't registered, please do. Um if there is inclement weather, weather it'll be virtual. Just so you know, so that, that so we will, you know, Judy, that's her, we're all Judy and I are on, uh, work with. Well, Judy's on the recognitions committee. I am their staff person, and um, we're really hoping that the weather is going to be great because we have the recognition ceremony right the night before. So, registration for the recognition ceremony closes tomorrow. So, if you're planning on attend you know, attending to support someone. So the nominees were announced and sent out. I don't know if all of you saw that, um, but Diane Smith, Go Hasmer, Hope Thomas, Melissa Mayo, Jocelyn and Pace, and the archives group have all been nominated for an award. So if you'd like to come out and celebrate them, we would love to have you. Yes, there will be heavy hors d'oeuvres served. Just want to make sure that that's clear because people didn't know that last year. Um, and the ceremony is going to start at 7.30. So um Probably we will be done before nine o'clock, probably by 8.30 we'll be done. Um, but we would love to have you come out. And if you can't make it, we're going to um, do Facebook Live. So hopefully you'll catch us there. Any questions? Families are welcome. They just need to be registered. I do have one about the flag ceremony. So yeah. if it doesn't yeah. start till 7.30, are we doing the flag ceremony at seven or seven thirty? I would say seven thirty. I think they're gonna kick us off at seven thirty. Does that help? Oh, okay. All right. Then I've got to correct my time for okay. my girls. Yeah. But thank you. We just we're gonna open the door at seven, have food start at seven so they can come in and eat. So they can arrive at seven or if they want to practice, that gives them a little time to practice ahead of time, Judy, if they need well, to. Well, the girls will definitely want to eat. I mean, yes, exactly. Well, we want them to know they're welcome. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so our delegates and alternates. So right now our delegates are, I know Emily had to decline her position. So um, Samantha is going to step in and Amelie is going to be the alternate. But what I am hearing based on um, some things um, and not being able to get enough delegates, um, it seems like there might be um, a discussion about um, instead of just getting three um, delegates per service unit or per at-large group, they will get four. So any alternate delegates will automatically be a delegate or at least one to round out to four. So we have enough delegates so council business can happen. So um, just so you know. 
Um, but thank you. Do you actually have representation this year? So that's exciting. So that's really great. So I really appreciate all of you voting and participating in delegate elections. Um, can't brain hide it. So Alyssa, oh, yep, let me go back. What, what you need? Jenny, can I have a quick question about clarification on some of the documentation for <laughs> um, representation? It said summer camp delegates, and that like sort of more generic language, and some of it said summer camp administrators. And a couple of years ago, there was conversation about anybody associated with like a summer camp can be a delegate or alternate. Can you clarify for us so, um, what's the current one? Does it have to be an administrator for a summer camp, or can it be anybody associated with a summer camp? So. That's a good question. I will try to get some clarification from Holly. I know. So one of the things that we were trying to help them, I have to make sure that it's where it is in the bylaws. I don't know all the bylaws and stuff like that. So um, I think they went more towards administration, you know, or, or like key roles, you know, um, as far as this, but what I am trying to advocate for, because again, you have not had representation and y'all have so many camp volunteers. And part of the reason why you haven't had um, representation is because it's getting the vote, right? Getting everyone to vote. And, and that's that what I was wondering. I was like, I, it's really hard for us to get a quorum because so many of us wear a multiple Exactly. And that's why I was trying to say, so that might be, that might be something that, um, y'all as a camp community and as a delegate might want to put forward as a change to make sure that, um, you know, it is clarified that it could be camp volunteers and not just admin because y'all camp volunteers are an ad at large group. They really are, you know, because a lot of them that like your unit leaders and things like that, they may or not may not be a troop leader. They are probably not voting with their service unit. They are more likely voting, not voting at all and not participating at all other than being a unit leader or something like that. Or they're a troop leader, but may decide to vote with camp instead, you know? Um, so, because you also need representation. So um, that might be something, I don't know what the deadlines were. I and mean, we might've missed the deadline, but it's something that we might want to put forward in the future to really get that clarified. Um, but I think a proposal has to be made for that, that to change. Yeah, I think if you guys could help us look at what the current language yeah. is, just so we know going into next year, then that would definitely help us consider what language we need for our representation. Because um, I, I just I just noticed that the language has changed a couple of times over the last few years, just in sort of conversation it, it and the emails back and forth. And so I just want to make sure that we we know how to represent ourselves. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, uh, this go round, I think it's more an administrative role of some sort at camp. Um, so a volunteer administrator. Um, I think the word used to be camp director, but I don't think that's what's actually in the bylaw. So I'll try to, I'll get with Holly, try to get the verbiage. And then if you, you all want to put forward a proposal, I suggest it because same, like there's so many volunteers that carry so many hats that you're not getting, it'll, it just puts you in a point that you can't get representation, you know, and that's, that defeats the purpose to me. So, um, absolutely. But yeah, we'll clarify. I'm all make a note to reach out to Holly and find out where it is in the bylaws. All right, okay. Thanks for asking. All right, so um, Alyssa put in some Camp Brain highlights. Um, so when we're configuring the t-shirt sizes for staff, um, same thing. So we, I think if you were on the call earlier, um, you know, we, we have, thanks to Ollie's help, we figured out how to update and change instead of a multiple choice or a, a you know, when someone was filling in the um, camp t-shirt form, it was like suggested text. And so as long as they typed the right thing, it would pull up what you wanted. But if it was um, so, like, so instead of like, maybe the size is adult medium, but you had AM or something like that, or they might put AM or something like that. So when you're pulling your forms, it doesn't do the count correctly. So when we set it up correctly, you can pull that report and it gives you all your numbers. And so now it's a single choice. They can't type in anything different. So Alyssa is going through to fix all of that. What we, she needs to know is what are your sizes? And so um, Amelie, one of the things I suggested 
that she needed to reach out to you because I could see um, it was, um, she has youth small and youth medium, and this is the staff side. So I don't know if you want that. So you might want to just let her know. So, so yeah, we're, we're keeping it just so that the reports are the same, assuming okay. we're going to have zero orders for that, but okay. just so that they're consistent. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Let's, we'll just let her know that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So, um, so when you're setting, we're setting these up, this is where you have to configure it here and it's under configurable fields. And then when you're in the application, you have to actually turn it on here. Um, so just so you know, so where it looks like, so you can refer back to this. If you're like, where is that? What was Judy talking about? Um, we, for the most part, will do this setup for you, but some of, like I said, some of the one more, um, uh, some of the camp directors have had a little more access to do some of the setup themselves and make some specific changes. So now that we've had Camp Brain for a couple of years, if like Amelie this year went in and uh, kind of re-customized their staff application, we are happy to give you access to do that if you would like to do that. We want you to be able to have all your forms and fields and everything customized to your camp in Camp Brain. So it cuts out your workload. Like that's what we really want to be able to do. So if that's something we can help you with or you want more access, let us know. We'll give it to you. Um, and again, this is what it looks like for the um, the camper side. So again, you're going to go into configuration and select season configurable fields. And then you have to have a form for the camper side to make it work. So it's not just here and it's not just here. It has to be an actual form for you to pull that data in the reports. Um, so just so you know, um, but we fixed that. We fixed that for sure, Hollow. by the way, just so you know, I think we was missing, <laughs> missing the form. So now, and the good thing about those forms, Alyssa can go in and easily um, make sure that it's on your, your camp registration. So if you are offering adult sizes, be sure to let us know so we can be specific. So if, if, if that needs to change or, or, you know, Ash or whatever, let us know. We just need to know the sizes, we'll fix it for you. Um, cancellation refund policy. So we're cleaning up our cancellation refund policy um, with the update to safety activity um, checkpoints. We we actually got permission from GSUSA. They're actually using our stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, we are changing it to more of an infectious diseases um, instead of just COVID specific. So we're changing the language. So it's about infectious disease. So there is still, you know, some information. We're actually going to submit this cancellation and refund policy to Camp Brain because each time a camper registers, that policy is actually on the account statement and that needs to be updated. So this is what's going to go on there. They just haven't had a chance to do it yet. Um, but it's um, located under your season configuration. So if you want to look look at that you can um and then under each camp i'm um, like for instance um dark hollow and sugar hollow they have a couple of weeks right so but their deadline is actually for both is the same date um and so we're going to insert that at the bottom so just it's very clear when your cancellation deadline is for your camp so they don't have to go hunt for it. it's very easy for us to all know um and we will put that in the main page of the camp. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Judy. Well, for us, um, we are a two-week camp, yep. and the way it appears in Camp Brain, it's it's not. It looks like there's you could choose from either week, right? And that's not how we're truly set up. Although we appreciate having the girls there, right. they just come in. If they come the second week, then they come in in the middle, and if they come in the first week, then they miss the second week, and it's just, it's just really confusing. It. I don't know how. What, what can we do? <laughs> well, well, how is a better way for it to be presented? Can I can I add that? When I was at Dark Hollow, we had one girl that only showed up the second week and went, what do you mean I could have come from both weeks? My mom thought I could only choose one or the other, so I only came one week. So it gets even yeah. more complicated. Yeah, so because with Dark Hollow, the younger kids come just the first week. Is that correct? Right. And then, but older kids can come both weeks. And so, yeah, I think, yeah. I, I think we just need- We to have a kindergarten, first grade- uh, Unit. Session. session and that's session one yeah and session two and that's how we advertise it session two 
right. is June 17th through the 21st and the 24th through the 28th. That's that's how it's, you know, and, not right. or, right. and. And it's in there, it's a two-week session. So we, but I don't know whether to put that at the beginning too, because, yeah. Yeah. Well, Pew look, three, I think that's, that's a good words and stop. I think, so I think with the older girls, their dates should be the first day to camp to the very last day to camp instead of splitting it. And that may also help. Um, but, but I know there's a break over the weekend. So it's like, they need to understand that they're going home for the weekend. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah. Will, yeah, you know, some people will just send them by. Yeah. Two of them, the kids are gone. We'll wait. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's a good point. Um, hmm. when we do your setup, let's, 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 I'll speak to Alyssa or whatever, but talk to but We may just have to, there's some a suggestive text that we can put in there. Right. So for those sessions, I think we maybe add some more when they're clicking on it. It's very clear, put it in red. Like, you know, um, I know like, for instance, one of the things that we run in with Sugar Hollow is like their bus. Like we can't right now require them to choose the correct bus or choose. We can't force them to choose the bus route, right? So amma has gone in there and added some suggestive text on there. So it's really red. Like it's kind of hard to miss, you know, it's like you don't read it, shame on you, right? And so I think we, we made it really obnoxious. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you really have to do. I think we just make it really obnoxious. So it's very clear that, your kid, if they're this grade and up, are coming for both weeks, not just one. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. But yeah, we'll we'll do something to at least do that, um, if not something more. So and I am aware that people like to <sighs> church camps. Yeah. You know, they they coincide with our weeks and sure. and that's just life. I mean, that's absolutely that's, right. And so they normally will address they will contact me and say, right. and I go, and I have to say, of course you will want to go to church camp. I mean, right. I mean, yes. Um, so, you know, but that's, that's what's happening. And typically since they pay, we're very reasonable. Absolutely. You are. Yeah, absolutely. Very reasonable. Yeah. We're going to go up a little bit this year. Well, good, and you should. You really, but, we don't want you to devalue yourself, right? Because that's the thing. You'll do a great camp. But and, see, we can't go up too much. No. Does, does that make sense? I mean, you can't just go up hundred dollars and go. No. Whoa, we're worth it. Well, they're going to say you've never been worth it before. It's a, it's 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 a gradual increase, right? You can't jump too yeah. much at one time because then you'll lose a lot of people, and we don't want to do that. No. So but no, I get that. No, absolutely. Um, let's look at it when we meet and, and we'll see what we can do. So just make sure that's one of the topics of discussions. I made notes, but just make topic, make sure that when we review your setup, that we look at that so we can like, at least make it obnoxiously clear, you know, that, that, Hey, for this grade level, it's two weeks. The dates are both, you know, um, okay, well, I'm going to go on that tutorial because right now I don't know how to use rally hood. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, we got the grandmother in here, you know, and she's okay. kind of slow. And well, here's the I'll thing. have to get one of the grandkids to help me. <laughs> I will send you the link just so you can pick a date so we can meet, and that way Alyssa will make sure she's ready for you, right? So okay. I'll send you that. Just, just oh, all right. <laughs> there, we'll get you Thank started you. that way. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Um. So a daily attendance log, so need to be updated and shared. So just a reminder that Dark Hollow, um, remind me again, um, Brenda, um, it was Dark Hollow. And I think Ash said you didn't, you didn't need the attendance. So when we first bought Camp Brain, I know Amelie's been using, there's an attendance feature, right? Um, and so... Some of you are using it, some of you are not. Amelie has used it the past, since we started, I think. So I don't know, Amelie, if you can speak to that, like if you really like it, what, how, how. Oh, how, love, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, why, why? can you tell them why you love it, love it, love it? Um, because it has taken the number of pieces of paper I touch during a day down, and it has taken the amount of time I sit in an office in front of a computer rather than be out in the sunshine with kids. Right. Down. Yeah. And, and I would rather be out with the kids. And the other thing that it does, now I know this 
it, it is so again there's an additional cost it's a module that we have to pay for um and i think it's brenda remind me i don't think they've gone up but it was like 500 dollars per camp right is that correct do you remember we'll have to we'll get back to you on that so I'm not we, that big of a dork. Um, I'm looking it up right now, and I'll be able to list the three camps that are currently using yeah, it. I'm pretty and how much it cost it. I'm pretty sure that we did. <laughs> it was uh, yeah. So Amelie ha Sugar Hollow has it. We got it for Dark Hollow. I don't think I've used it, and then um, and it's okay. It's okay, but we we want to implement it and help you. Um, and then Ash, I think we also got it for Trefoil Academy. Um, and again, it's just so you can go in and take um. And Angie, you have your hand raised. Let me go ahead and let you ask your question. As usual, I'm confused. I printed out a sheet of paper and yeah. put check marks on it. Yes. But so, we don't have internet access at our camp right. unless I hotspot myself. So. Right. right. And same with Sugar um, That's the same with Sugar and, and that's the thing that's transitioned us, Angie, is we bought routers to be able to have internet access at Sugar Hollow and that's been a game changer. So like what we've done, what we did the last two years was laminated paper that people did dry erase marker and checked off as people checked, as like campers checked in and that laminated check off came to the office and I just input it into the computer. This year, the goal is actually to take an iPad to the bus or to the car and check them right in through Camp Brain. And attendance isn't done in the office at all. Like it's not even part of the paperwork routine at camp, whatever. Like we know the child is on the property the second they're on the property. So well, we never good. attempted anything that tech savvy at our camp before. We are not even sure our internet can handle it, but we're gonna try it. But that obviously wouldn't have been possible in our camp three years ago, and it's not gonna be possible everywhere. That's not at all so, possible unless we're personally hot spotting ourselves because the camp we low location doesn't give us internet access and then we so, would have to so pay here's for a, a safety thing. consideration for us so like we do buses and we don't do attendance until the kids are at camp so let's just say let's just say god forbid an accident happens on a bus and i get a phone call as a director that i have to handle that i have no idea who's on that bus right so one of the perks to this is that if I'm able to have my bus captain take attendance through Camp Brain, then as camp director at camp and as counsel, whoever's on call with the emergency phone, where whoever was handling that emergency with us, we are immediately going to be able to account for every child and adult on that bus at any given moment right. while the bus captain and the bus driver is handling it on the scene. And so like... For us, we're just going to try to take that extra push to do that technology thing. But again, we would not have been able to do it two, three years ago. So we're taking a little bit of risk by making the extra push for the extra technology this year. But part of it is because of our thinking about us using buses and just knowing this day and age, things happen all the time. And we're just going to be ready for it when it does. That's cool. My solution would have been take attendance, snap a picture, send a picture. Um which works again. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out. Basically, am I supposed to have been? But again, remember, I don't have admin access to my camp to be doing these sorts of things. So I may not know what you're talking about because it wasn't something I had oh, access you, to. You, you didn't. So there was only a few. We were testing out with a few camps right before we rolled it out to everybody. We definitely. You definitely need to know a daily attendance log. You know because now. We we like the fact that it's in Camp Brain. It really came in handy during COVID and stuff like that when we were having to deal with things because staff can log in back office and see all that information and start on our end of the things that we needed to do to help you. And so if we have access and you have access and it's just entered in, one, less paper later, two, um, it's, we know if we need to reach out to that parent, we know who that is and all that stuff. So we can help. So y'all could just focus on camp and we can kind of give you a lift if needed. So okay. the so in the meantime, I mean if I have a paper with checks on it, one paper with checks on it of who's there and who's not there, that that is fulfilling my requirement yes, for now. Yes, yeah, okay. daily attendance log. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, okay. absolutely. The, the, okay, problem gotcha. with this, the problem with the attendance tier is because it's five hundred dollars right. per license. Yeah, that is almost as much as what our licenses are for everybody to have their camp brain license in the first place. 
Right. So it is a significant cost right. in comparison to the actual camp brand license. So it's $500 extra a, a, a year. Um, so I, unless it's, you know, really being used, I'm not on board with throwing it out to everybody just for the fun of it. And that's not uh, what especially if you know they, you don't have any type of signal or or that situation. Um, the dark hall of sugar hall and tree fall were the three camps that we had originally decided on um, that could possibly use it. So they're the ones that would have access to it right now. But certainly, if you think you would be interested in it and it would make your life easier, I think that. We should deal with the people that are using it, utilizing it um, right now. And then we meet with them and we hold a little training and we decide, you know, what's so, the best route. Because it may not be the best route, right? Um, both cost-wise and, you know, technology-wise. So, uh, let me just say this. I know Dark Hollow and Treefall have not been using theirs. And that's what I wanted to say. So there are two. Beth rings uh, who is not on this call may be interested because she does have a week-long um day camp and if the, and may have access because she's typically in the middle of town um so but that's why i wanted to bring it up um um yeah so rainbows in and adventures who y'all are typically weekend camps um chris right so you know those so are we potentially the only camp who is and wants to use it right now yes right now it seems that seems that way but judy has her hand and friendly you said it's an a la carte pricing yes yes all right so let's keep talking about that because we might yeah yeah um so judy go ahead what would you do go ahead so what you are... don't mind if we don't use it yeah I no mean, we're just saying here would it be okay if we stay within our comfort zone yeah absolutely so what we're just saying is that we're <laughs> We require a daily log, right? You need to include time for drop off and pick up, you know, who the picker, you know, who's picking up the kids, these things, right? Doesn't matter if it's paper, if it's digital. Amelie yeah. likes her digital, it's working for her. And that's what we want to be able to keep. If, you know, what we're saying is we've got two. If, if what we need to know, if nobody wants them, then we're going to take that off and stop paying for them, right? So yeah, it's just, just... just time to reevaluate. Um, because you you know you didn't use them and that's okay we're not requiring you to so we will we're, talk we're to we're real that. comfortable with paper yes yeah, just, yeah, just yeah it's fine paper it's fine <laughs> so one of the things that we're doing is working like like previously when Amelie showed you that little check sheet so trying to build a report like that because it has the little check off and it has their sizes and all that stuff like um something like that and, and there are already a couple in there for attendance, something that pre-populates for you with the kid's name and their t-shirt size and all that stuff, whatever you need to know for check-in. Um, and so there's some options in there already. And that's the key is like, how can we make your life easier? Um, yes, it's helpful for us to know in an emergency, you know, if, if all everything's on paper at camp, this is the thing that you should think about. All the things are on paper at camp. And there is an active shooter situation, God forbid, right? Um, hopefully that never happens. Um, or something, you know, I don't know, like a building collapses. I don't know. Hopefully not. Um, we, that paper log is there with you and we don't have access to that information. So we don't know who we're covering. So just know that that's, hopefully that never happens. But just like Amelie said, like if God forbid a bus accident happens, She's not going to know who's on that bus that day, you know, unless they log them in on that bus. So it's just things like that, that we're hoping we never have to deal with, but that's why it's helpful to have it in the system and as quickly as possible, just because if we ever had to help you or some awful, you know, thing like that happened, we, we could, we'll figure it out. I mean, bottom line, we'll figure it out, but we'll be hunting down for a piece of paper. So, so, this, so this year we could, our units or in Camp Brain, their cabins. Right. Oh, I think she froze. To us, the gophers, as usual. And we could go ahead. Our copy could be on the computer. Would that be? And yeah, then so, you would have yeah. yeah, so if you access. wanted to, yeah. So if you wanted to do like a Google sheet and share it with Alyssa, you know, or something like that, because that way she would have access. That's, that's another workaround and it's free. So- we can just share okay. that uh, way 
updated right there. So absolutely. Uh, I got people that can teach me what the heck yeah. a Google Sheet is. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So good. It's just a spreadsheet that we can see. Yeah, I know. I'm just giving you a hard time because I'm so computer illiterate. So you know. it's, okay. it's okay. You know, the weekend camps, you know, they typically know from the beginning of camp and <laughs> look at a little shirt. Um, the weekend camps, you know, they know there's not a lot of leaving and moving and checking out. Look at her. It's like, oh, hello. Um, yeah. So, um, so, you know, it's not so, you know, there's hopefully time enough, you know, we kind of know, you know, who's basically going to be there because it's not enough. It's not a lot of checking in and out, I guess, with the weekend camps. So hopefully that helps. But just, again, just remember your daily logs. I mean, that's the thing. Just want to keep those in mind and, and as much safety. So, um, so it looks like we have two up for grabs. Um, and, and, you know, so just know there's two attendants that we would, you know, get moved over to your camp if you if you want it. So if you're a week long camp, I, again I don't think the rain. If you're a weekend camp and want it, that's fine. But I, I don't think we're we're basically opening for the week, the week long camps, right, Brenda? You're muted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I see the head shake. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. I mean, five hundred dollars for a weekend. I'm sorry. I just. A lot. I, right. I would. I can't. That's what I thought. I it can't was do it. <laughs> yeah. You can't cut that check. I just won't. You know. That's yeah. So this is what I was saying earlier. This is where on the general settings page, this is where Marcom is pulling the information for us to market your camp. So this is what we really want to make sure. So if whatever you want the parents to know, we want to make sure it's on this page when they log in, but it also means it's on our all of our other promotions. So a lot of questions we get is, what time does camp start? What time do I have to pick up this kid, you know, my kid or whatever, you know? And so they, we get those questions. They'll, that's what they're deciding before they select camp. They're like, what time do I have to get them there? What time do I have to pick them up? Um, things like that. So is there early drop-off? Things like that, you know, like for Sugar Hollow, obviously the buses, they want to know where the buses are. So updating all those kind of things really helps. So but this is where the marketing, you know, so anything like that that you can share, that would be great. And this is where the Marcom, so Jennifer Marcom has access and they can go in and pull this information. So Alyssa lets them know, hey, this camp is good to go. They're going live on this date and they pull this information over. Any questions? All right. Um, position agreement. So one of the things um, that Amelie did is she added the camp pathway facilitator position agreement. So when someone's actually filling out the camp um, volunteer application, they're actually seeing their position description and it's in there. And Alyssa is working to make sure that these are in all the camps. So, you know, it's, gen it's a generic camp volunteer position agreement, just so you know. Um, if you need like trefoil or ash, if you want that to be a little more specific or or less specific, just let Alyssa know. We you can tailor that somewhat. So, um, but again, the idea is getting all the paperwork in Camp Brain, so you don't have as much paperwork to turn into us because it's there, right? And we could go as a click of a button, download it if we needed it, right? Um, and you could do the same. So that's really the idea. Um, okay, so training dates. These are the only training dates that have been submitted to me for CIT and Camp Pro Program Aid. Um, Amy, I'm glad you're on the call. And Judy, I'm glad you're on the call. Do you have any CIT um, or CPA training dates um, coming up or going to be provided? Angie, or do, uh, Amy, yeah, Angie did you say you were going to do that? <laughs> Amy, Angie, well, so I have Angie so and Judy are council trainers. And then Amy McCarty actually is going to be looking into becoming a council trainer. I know she helped last year. So Amy, I'm all, I'll also calling you to see if, do you know if y'all are going to do one out at Camp SAC? So um, I'm looking for dates. We need more dates. Like, so typically we've had them at Camp SAC. We've had them in Roanoke. Um, Beth is not on the call. She does them out in the Harrisonburg area. And then um, of course, Sugar Hollow. So it is really good to have all those date options because it's not, these trainings are not camp specific. These trainings are specific to this. This is a national award they actually earn by being a um, camp program aide or a CIT. 
And it's very important that they have the training first. Um, and so. Yeah, this is general leadership training. Yes, it, exactly. It's really, really important. Yeah. I mean, well, it's helpful. Yes. Um, I think it's important, but I, I'm yeah. hoping the girls think it's helpful. It's um, hmm. Can we use it? We've always used Ishimani and we weren't sure. Gotcha. Okay. We just weren't sure because okay. we, we want to yeah. be. Yeah, we don't want to be in anybody's way, and yeah, but you, can, but the thing I haven't figured that out yet. Okay, so let let me reach out to Sandy and our 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 Melissa. And it's probably Sandy, because she's been the one that's had her kind of finger on that of, of yay or nay or whatever. So, do you do you have any dates in mind that you might want to hold it so I could actually tell her like, hey, this is what they're thinking. Uh, Angie, you, are you going to help with that? I can, I can assist. I have entirely too many other things. Um, yeah. Do, do you um, have a date even like early? We had morning? like March 2nd for okay. the one and March 9th for the other. And I can never remember which one comes first. That's what I need. Because I want to build the registrations and get those open. So, so you just don't know which one. So March 2nd, March 9th is what you were looking at. But you don't know if you want to do a CIT or CPA first. So Sugar Hall is going to do them on the same day. I recommend if there's an order, I recommend CP. Do we do CIT for CPA? I can't remember. What is helpful? I mean, I'm I'm like, what's helpful I, for all of you? Like what to come first? The CPA is is Usually. for the younger girls, mm -hmm. and the yep. CIT is for older girls. Correct. Correct. So, so this should the second be the CPA and the ninth be CIT. The CIT? Well, it, and, yeah. And can it be where? Where did you want it, Angie? I mean, can it? Be, I mean, uh, where I'm talking about Ishimani, if we can use it, I have no location. As I said, okay, the place okay. that I've been using are being buttheads right now. They'll let other people schedule in advance, but they won't let me schedule in advance. Thanks. Um, so I have no location. Um, so I would eventually like to have one down our way, but that's not a now thing. And especially not a, not a this year thing. Um, oh, Chris, that's so good. if we can use campus Shamani, then that we could just go ahead and, uh, okay. Chris says she's going to offer it in Giles next year. Um, Thanks. let me know when that is. I am a trainer. I can help with that in Giles. And I would love to help with that in Giles because that is closer. I can do both if need be. Um, we all know how I love to spread myself out at as many camps as I can end up at. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. So Chris, yes. Yeah. So yeah. So Chris, have you heard from Beth any dates that she's shared? Because I know the camps need to start telling the girls and I want to have the registrations built. So if you haven't heard from her, it's fine. I'll read. So those. I actually just emailed her a little bit earlier. She's at the adventurers meeting right now. Um, just to remind her that I wanted to mentor and see if she had dates yet. She said okay. she did not, but appreciated the reminder. So she's going to get with you in the next week or so about dates. Okay, perfect. So as soon as I have those, I will share them and I'll put it, I'll put them not just in the other areas, but I will post those dates on the, the, um, summer camp, uh, rally hood calendar for you all. Will that be helpful if I post them on that calendar? just so you have them, yes. even, even if yes. they're not like registration open yet. So at least you can start sharing. So I'll put a post in there. Um, Do we have a rough ETA of when registration might open? <laughs> yeah, so, just so I can calm down the two CITs so that I have. For Sugar Hollow, I'm trying to get those up. Um, what is, what is, um, I don't know if I'll get them up by Monday. My goal is to get, I actually wanted them up already. <coughs> I've had the dates, but I just haven't had to build them. Um, sorry. Um, my goal is to get those open by Monday if I can for at least the April 20th. So the sooner I have them, the sooner I can open them. Cause once I start, cause once I get in there, I just kind of knock them all out at the same time. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's good. So if we find out that Ishimani is available on March 2nd and March 9th, uh -huh. uh, if I come tomorrow and find out, is that possible? I mean, well, it'll be on the calendar, right? Or can I look on yeah. the calendar? Yeah, yeah. So here, here let, me, let me do this real quick. Let me go over here to, um, I can pull up the calendar and pull up the Shemani rate. Right? Y'all don't need to look at all my crazy calendar, but here, I'll do this. Let's just look to see real quick. We'll just close our eyes. You go ahead and look. <laughs> right? All right. So, 
All right. It looks like someone has booked the ninth already. I don't know what that is for, but I'll double check check entire site lb i don't know it's somebody who's booked it well, each of them are only four hours now right uh no it's it's more than that because it's usually you start at nine oh you start at nine and then you're in by four so it's a little bit longer than four hours okay um i mean usually y'all have a lunch I mean, break cit used to be overnight so right it's just that's a day it. event right that's exactly so it mm -hmm. looks like the night the second is open but the ninth looks like it's booked um and i it can do the second and the 16th if that helps i would not like to do them at the same time because i have um girls who are coming with me right. to be trained right. and they would i would have random kids hanging out during a session and it's too far to yeah. have them come on their own and so those sorts of things you know for me personally that doesn't work but i could do the 16th so okay. whatever works out, so, Judy, you can figure it out and let me know. Do you want me to put a hold on these? Like, I'll just put a hold for CIT or like, so do, let me ask you, CPA first. Do you want to do CPA first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just do a hold. The younger girls, yeah. Okay. And then you want to do the 16th? Is the 16th going to work? But be aware, the CPA training is not for camp. It's just, that is just the sure. pure leadership and they can and that's what we keep ex expressing that c does not stand for camp it stands for cadet so right. cadet program training and and that's they can yeah. use it in their troop they can and that's right. what we try to explain to them but sometimes yes. it just whoosh, right yeah. over their head yeah. they figure yeah. they're ready for camp here i'll do where where do they get the camp specific training now we have to set it up each camp sets up their own uh yeah, their they, own camp program when, they training. when they don't bother to attend because they think they're too busy, um, what do you do with that? They've had the CIT training, so they're yep. expecting to be, be listed as a CIT, but they can't come to the CIT camp training because they've got something else going on. What do they do with that? And they're CIT not staff. It's always been a little bit different. This is CPA, uh, Cadet Program Aid training. They want... They want them to have some leadership training before they do it. And then the camps are supposed to set up right. there because each camp is different in what, what expected so of their I, roles is different. Right. So would I then just tell them that they're CPAs instead of CITs because making them a camper is not an option. Yeah. So Emily, do you want to explain that? And Ash, maybe I'll explain, but yeah, I mean, if they've not had your camp specific training, like that's one of the things we tell them during um training is that after this they have to take camp specific training okay and so um they need to do that they need to yeah. do that and so if they're not then i know amelie like so for instance they, she's had um basically junior assistants right and so yeah that's that's not really coming out of not coming to our training though right. um that's it. So because for the last couple of years, CPA training's only been offered once and only in one date and one option. And so we've had to offer an alternative level of, of your staff at our camp because not every teenager can be available on one date, particularly with not a lot of turnover and like notice of dates. So we now have a JA level that's technically like a CPA, but untrained. Um, so they have less responsibility. Uh, so our policy is they have to go to CPA or CIT training. They have to do council's training, but then they have to come to our camp training. And we used to do like a one day training and now we do like a weekend retreat. So we're trying to get people to come and make it a weekend, not been overly successful pitching that, but we try to make it fun. So Friday night is supposed to be new staff. We give them dinner, you know, we tour camp. We go over sort of the basic schedule procedures. We spend the night. Saturday morning, all staff show up, you staff, everybody. And so that's when we're really getting into planning the week, getting everything there. Um, we'll do breakout sessions for different things. And so you staff will do breakout sessions going into their specific roles and responsibilities at camp. We all do a big cookout, bonfire, whatever, spend the night. 
Um, and so they're all having to practice all their skills. And so one of the changes Sam's making this year is that we're going to do a mini camp. Like we're going to do flag ceremony. We're going to do cooking, like all the progressions that you're going to have to do during the week of camp, we're going to cram it into the weekend. So everyone's going to have practiced it beforehand. So yeah. It'll be training, but it'll be modeling as well. And then Sunday after we spend the night, Saturday night is usually like service projects around the property. So it's low key. And a lot of people leave um, to do family events or church and different things. And so but if you want to stay and have some time with camp family, you've got that option. So we try to encourage people to come. We have about a 70, 75% attendance rate for that. We do try to offer one makeup session. Um, it typically is virtual. So you've got to come on, go online, do a virtual training, confirm with us that you've done it. If you didn't do that, you show up and wing it. And that's the best we can do. But we can't afford to turn people away because we won't make our own shoes without it. So Angie, we're facing the same same problem you are, but we get most people. Yeah. But so, I, I totally actually, agree. You can't turn them away, but you're sort of, <laughs> I try to hook them up with like a mentor, a well-trained CIT or CPA that has been at camp, knows all about it. Ash, I bet you do the same or actually, similar. No, she, um, so I understand the fear about people not making training hours where you all right are, are was where I was nine years ago. Uh, I get it. I get the fear. What if I mandate these hours, people don't show, I'm going to lose my team. I'm going to lose my staff. I'm going to lose my hierarchy right before camp. It's going to be a mess. I get the fears. Mandating it, I have not lost a single person. At all. Everyone gets 40 hours of training camp specific training we check off all the requirements from aca so you make it how, it's so important they would feel so what we do show up so what we and the thing is what we do is we have a training log that they can update that we update when people attend because i take attendance we offer an in-person training as well as flip classrooms which is you come on zoom you're required to have at least 15 hours of actual practicing scenarios, doing things actually where you are engaged and you are playing the role of the staff member. You can't get away with saying, oh, I played the role of the camper. Uh -uh. You have to show me you can do these techniques. Um, and we document the log. I have a staff member who verifies it. Blue Jay is my paperwork deity. And we are tracking. And it turns cells green when they have completed a requirement. And about May, we start sending out a little alarm bells of, hey, you have fallen behind on your hours. We're getting a little concerned. Are you still coming to camp? What do we need to do to get you caught up? By end of June, they are either trained or they are told you're not going to come if you can't. Because I have people who fly in. So I don't want them coming to site and being with the students or being with the campers because if they don't know our emergency procedures cold if they don't know our policies cold it is a risk to have them there to be a staff member so, ash can i push back on my own bias on that yeah in absolutely my mind, in my mind i feel like you have a wait list of staff because you're so no amazing i don't so popular okay so no, you have a actually, list of campers, actually but not a wait list of staff we're still fighting coming back okay so when pandemic hit i was waiting for my baby boom of all my 17 year olds and I've lost the baby boom. So I'm rebuilding. Right. Um, you, I mean, I, that I makes me feel here. better. I, in my mind, I'm just like, Ash, no, just, no, no, just like no, up for her. <laughs> no. When we started doing this, I had only 18 staff when I started mandating training. And what I did was I turned to the staff and I said, how would you like to lower your stress levels at camp? Because when we did these like weekly trainings. That's one reason why I was pushing about the dates because my team's getting ready to assemble the training dates all the way through June. And we record these trainings too, so that if someone misses a training, you're allowed to watch up to so many recordings and complete verification questions. So we know you actually record and you weren't just playing a video game with it playing in the background. Right. But you can go back to it. And now I have a huge knowledge center of training. I have over 120 videos in my knowledge center now. So, I mean, don't let the fear block you. I get the fear. It's terrifying to make that push because I am I remember having this discussion at ACA 
And I was like, I'm going to lose my team. And they're like, no, you won't. Try it. I'm telling you the same thing. It is a risk, a liability to allow people who are not trained. Yeah, I agree with mentoring. It's good to have them mentored. They should be mentored. It is a liability to have them without training, representing a staff, even as a CIT. Because a camper looks to them still as a position of authority because they're in the age of mentoring. Yeah, sorry, and I should have clarified that. We don't let them come to camp as youth staff if they haven't come to training. It's yeah. adults that we oh, even adult. on because yeah, we no. have to have the ratios, but you staff, we don't. We say, you've got, yeah. you've got, we want you there in person for our in-person training. If you can't, you've got to do a virtual like makeup, you can do that, yeah. but you do have to take the responsibility to do training in some form or fashion. Yeah. So we're like, we even give a training log of these are all the offerings of training. It will auto fill out to let you know that you have met all our requirements, construct your training log of what dates you're coming turn it in. And that way they know right now in January, okay, I am going to have problems. And now I have five months to work with them versus two weeks before camp. I'm trying to make sure camp even runs. Please, please train your staff. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. We, I mean, definitely you want, you want, I, I, I agree. Like we, so CIT and CPA, it is that first start. And it's really, we're trying to get those girls that, you know, want to work at camp or they want to, they want to hold this role in some way. And there is that basic leadership and we want them to earn the award. It's a national award, but your camp specific training is so very important because every camp is different and you want to make sure, you know, yes, y'all have all these emergency action plans and all these things that you have in place. They need to know those. They need to know what to do in an emergency. And if they don't come to your specific training, you know, are they really getting that and understanding what to do? You know, how do they deal with these? Like we start, like, like Judy said, in the training for CIT even CPA, we start talking about those things, but it's your specific camp training that they really get the nitty gritty of information that they need. So it's very important. So thank you. For, thank you for sharing. Is there anything else that needs to be shared on this topic? So we're working on training dates. As soon as I have them, I will post them and share them. Um, it looks like for the Roanoke area, it's going to be March 2nd and the 16th. And then um, Chris is going to work with Beth and then we're going to get dates in that area. And then Amy, I don't know if you can unmute, if you know, if um, hopefully she's still there. Um, a seer, but I don't hear. Um, see if I, I'm actually meeting with Donna Gwill and Rebecca Duncan tomorrow at Camp SAC. So I will ask them if they're going to hold a CPA or CIT training. I don't know if Amy can, if I miss it, if she posts it in the chat. Oh, she says we are not. Okay. We are not doing it. Okay, great. All right. Good to know. Thank you for clarifying. I see it in the chat now. Okay. So it looks like it's going to be Sugar Hollow, Roanoke, and the Harrisonburg area is where they'll be held, just so you know, okay? Um, and then hopefully again, eventually in Giles, and then maybe hopefully again in Camp Sack. So I don't know, maybe they're alternating years. I don't know. Um, I'll talk to them about it tomorrow. Cause it really, the more dates we have available for that, the more apt we are to get them, you know, and, and get them trained like they need to be. Okay, um, next step. So again, post your dates on Rallyhood sign up to set up your registration by January 31st. Um, and then um, any camp budgets or that are past due or anything. And then watch for Rallyhood, we'll make notifications. So Judy, if you're having difficulty getting in Rallyhood, let me know, I'll try to help you get into there. So I think, I think that's it. Unless you have additional questions, hopefully we covered everything you, you needed. So um, thanks for being here. I am going to stop the recording. Um,